up, give it up for Tawana Petty. When I was a little girl, I hated water. Water was so boring. Water was like drinking sandpaper. It was disgusting. But every time I turned around, my mother was trying to get me to drink water. You need to drink so and so ounces a day. Water. She would even try to doctor it up by putting ice cubes in it to make it all glistening and stuff. But I wasn't feeling water. See, me and water had problems. And I blamed water for everything that went wrong in my life. Oh, hear me out. Hear me out. I'm six years old. If I drink water after 7 p.m. Exactly. I wet the bed. I get my butt whipped water. <laughs> Ten years old. I discover water balloons. Water balloons are supposed to be fun, right? So I fill them up. Stand on my mama bed. <laughs> I might have dropped a few out her window. <laughs> but you're supposed to do that with water balloons, right? <laughs> Butt whooping. 12 years old, I discover super soakers. Super soakers, right? Exciting times. This is super soaker. How many of y'all have super soakers? Exactly. So you fill it up, right? Wet up your little sister. <laughs> Butt whooping. So at this point in my life, I'm trying to figure out what everybody's excitement is about water. Because it seemed to just keep getting me in trouble. 14. I figure... I got this water thing all figured out, right? I got my hair done. Finally, I can wear a bikini. I'm going to the beach to get in water. Now, I, I was feeling myself, so I wasn't going to get too wet. I was just going, you know, I got my hair done, so I'm just going to dunk in and come out. <laughs> Thought it was cool. Thought me and water had an understanding until I got about a foot into the water and realized my bikini top was no longer on me. Now, this is the most embarrassing thing that can happen to a 14-year-old girl. Who was at the center of it? Exactly, water. So y'all can see why I'm not dealing with water, right? Why me and water is not friends, why I don't want nobody talking to me about water. So I get into my 30s. And I'm like, I still don't like water. Don't bring water up to me if I catch you in the street. Don't say nothing to me about water, okay? So I get into my 30s, and I'm thinking, I got this water thing behind me until I meet this boisterous, larger-than-life water warrior named Charity Hicks. I'm telling y'all, Charity was like the Rosa Parks of water. And she must have had a key to every door in the city of Detroit because you could hear her coming a mile away. And if you didn't hear her keys, you might have heard her cursing somebody out because Charity did not play. She did not play. And I'm telling you, like, Charity was amazing. She was amazing. And she, everything she did, she centered it around water. And she used to tell me, Tawana, Watch out for them activists out there. You know they practice ladynomics. So she was giving me advice, too. Charity was like a big sister. And she used to carry this, like, big jug, like the size of a small cooler around with her. And she would gulp that thing down and fill it back up. And I'm looking at her because it's like water. But it didn't matter because Charity was brilliant and smart. And I just loved her. And so... We used to talk for long hours about everything. 
We would talk in the daytime, and sometimes we would talk so long that it would go from day to night. And we would be sitting in her office, and we wouldn't even turn the lights on. Somebody would just walk up, turn the lights on, stare at us, and keep it going. <laughs> but it didn't matter because she was brilliant, and I loved, I just enjoyed her company. And everything she didn't like, she called gangster. Gangster politicians and gangster policy and gangster activists and the gangster thugs. And I'd be like, okay, I got you, gangster gangster but charity stood her ground and she cared about what's happening in the city of Detroit and all across the world and when it came to water she could not she would not waver and so March 2014 a few of us went over to mama Grace Lee Boggs's house late legendary activist was doing activism for decades in the city of Detroit and the reason why we went to her house this particular day was because her friend, her lifelong friend, Dr. Vincent Harding, had fell ill, another lifelong legendary activist. He used to write speeches for Dr. King. And so we went to her house to sing over the phone to him because he was ill and he loved singing. And so we did that. And when we were done, we went over to Pastor Bill Wiley Kellerman's church, another lifelong legendary activist in the city of Detroit. And so he's still active today. And so we get over to Pastor Bill Wiley Kellerman's church, and Charity is flipping out. I mean, flipping out. She's like, the gangster activists, the gangster policies, the gangster thugs, I don't care, them gangsters. Somebody gangster sent somebody to turn water off on my block. They went from house to house trying to turn water off. The pregnant lady next door to me, they tried to turn her water off. I tried to let her fill up her tub. They wouldn't let me let her fill up her tub. And then the lady on this side of the block, the elder, I tried to let her fill her tub up. They wouldn't let her fill up her tub. And I tried to stop them trucks. And he tried to hit me that gangster and I'm like whoa what's happening she like y'all better start waging love on each other because they coming after our water so I'm quiet and I'm thinking like what is going on water is not my thing so it was at that moment that we got the call that Dr. Vincent Harding had passed away. And I just remember silence coming over the church. We were crying and singing and holding each other and just really grateful that we had had that opportunity to sing to him before he joined the ancestors. And so we're all sitting there and we're thinking like, what does this call to wage love mean? And for me, I'm like, love, water, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, love and water, that, uh, you know, it just wasn't computing for me. So I said, we travel a lot, I'm going to Chicago, she's going to New York, and we normally would catch up when we come back from our travel. So I said, I'll talk to her about this wage love thing and this water thing when we get back, because that's what we did. But on May 31st, 2014, things changed. I got a phone call on the way back from Chicago telling me that somebody had ran Charity down as she stood at a bus stop going to talk about water. And the guy who had ran into her, he just left her there in the street and took off. So I'm sitting in the back of the car and I, I can't think of anything to do but just pray, God, please, please let Charity be okay. And so the rest of the ride home was silent we just, you know, we're basically just in our thoughts. And I get to the house and the door rang. I mean, I'm sorry. And the phone rang. And uh, they told me that she was in a coma. And so at this point, I dropped to my knees. I'm like, God, please, please. Charity is like a big sister to me. I love Charity. When I had fibroid surgery, she took me to womb healing ceremonies. She took me and she taught me how to honor my elders and my ancestors. Charity, I need her in my life. There's so much more for me to learn from her. God, please don't take this woman out my life. And we organize healing circles, and we organized candlelight vigils, and we did everything we could to keep Charity with us. 
and every day she was in a coma, I would call and talk to her. I tried to tell her jokes, they suck, but I tried anyway. I even sang to her, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I tried everything to bring charity back to us. But something amazing happened. People started to kick the call to wage love, and wage love was everywhere. It was on hashtags, and it was on buttons, and it was on t-shirts, and it was on websites, and it was in protests, and people was raising their fists all over the city saying, wage love. Wage love was global. And water warriors start to spring up all over the city. And Pastor Bill, he even laid his life down on a line to block the Homerick trucks from turning water off. He's a part of the Homerick Nine today. People put their life on a line because Charity put her life on a line. But on July 8th, 2014, Charity, you left your body and you didn't come back to us. But something amazing happened in me. I fell in love with water. I even joined your coalition, People's Water Board, and I even volunteered with We the People of Detroit. And you know what? I would even stand outside Detroit Water and Sewerage Department screaming and yelling at them. You would be so proud of me. And one of those days that we went door to door charity, it was because those same trucks came down my street to turn off my neighbor's water. And I had to show up like you showed up. And I had to put my life on the line like you put your life on the line. And I wrote a poem about that day. Charity, can I share it with you? You like to hear it? Here it go. I hail from a city where the water is off. 45 from Flint stones where they picking us off. They thought they had us cornered, but they pissed us off. Now we done come together. Who would have thought? I witnessed her soul slither violently away from her body. Denial pursed tightly upon her lips. She fixed her face to tell me she wasn't thirsty, that her babies weren't 30 days away from being ripped from her custody. I could sense deception in her teardrops. She was lying to me about water, fibbing to keep her babies near. She almost let me leave them waterless, and I wanted to hug her, but I knew that her pride was the only ounce of protection she had left to muster barely hanging on as if the reaper had granted her another chance if she could just pull herself together. Why do folks gotta beg for water, hiding behind scarlet letters spray painted to mark their negligence? I wondered what she thought of me, standing there with the fate of her family stuffed inside my trunk. I left three gallons of water and walked away. There'd be 10 more mothers for us to hydrate that day. I hail from a city where the water is off. 45 from Flint stones where they picking us off. They thought they had us cornered, but they pissed us off. Now we didn't come together. Who would have thought? So Charity, that's the poem I wrote when we went door to door helping the people on our street from the water being turned off. So I just want you to know that I made a vow that for the rest of my life, I would fight for people to have clean and affordable water. But I'm done with swimming pools.
Tawana Patty, everybody. Water one.